بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد سلیم اقبال ڈپٹی کنٹرولر ایگزامینیشن اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر سرجری سرٹیفائڈ ان میڈیکل ٹیچنگ فرام یونیورسٹی آف ہیلتھ سائنسز لاہور ٹوڈے آئی ایم ہیئر ود انادر امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک آف لمفڈینوپیتھی بٹ بفور آئی اسٹارٹ مائی ٹاپک آئی ریکویسٹ یو آل پلیز ڈونٹ فار گیٹ ٹو سبسکرائب مائی چینل اینڈ پریس بیل آئیکون Learning objectives of my today's lecture are What is lymphadenopathy? Different approaches to evaluate and manage lymphadenopathy How to differentiate between benign and malignant lymph nodes Then neck lymph nodes and tuberculous cervical lymphadenopathy Lymphadenopathy is enlargement of lymph nodes beyond this normal state Practically, this is any node more than 1 cm in greatest diameter. Lymphadenopathy refers to nodes that are abnormal in either size, consistency or number. Certain nodes should be considered enlarged at different sizes, that is, epitrochlear nodes more than 0.5 cm. inguinal nodes more than 1.5 cm submandibular nodes more than 1.5 cm there are various classification of lymphadenopathy but a simple and clinically useful system is to classify lymphadenopathy as generalized lymphadenopathy if lymph nodes are enlarged in two or more non contagious areas it almost always indicates the presence of significant systemic disease and localized lymphadenopathy if only one area is involved why lymph nodes enlarged there are multiple mechanisms of lymphadenopathy increase in number of benign lymphocytes and macrophages in response to antigens infiltration of inflammatory cells in infection that is lymphadenitis in situ proliferation of malignant lymphocytes or macrophages infiltration by metastatic malignant cells infiltration of lymph nodes by metabolites laden macrophages for example in lipid storage diseases localized lymphadenopathy is most common and localized lymphadenopathy usually occurs in head and neck areas then inguinal areas then axillary and supraclavicular areas if a patient present with lymphadenopathy we have to make three different lines number 1 if the history and physical examinations are diagnostic of some pathology for example pharyngitis conjunctivitis respiratory tract infection then we have to treat the condition if history and physical examination is suggestive of some disease for example lymphomas syphilis hiv then we have to go for specific testing and if the tests are positive then we have to treat the condition and if by history and physical examination the cause is unknown then we have to follow two lines if it is generalized lymphadenopathy or localized if generalized lymphadenopathy then we have to review epidemiological clues we have to review medications then we have to uh, take cbc of patient and if it is positive and diagnostic then treat the cause and if it is negative then we have to observe the patient and if lymphadenopathy is localized and patient is having strong risk of malignancy or serious illness then we have to go for biopsy of suspected lymph nodes and if there is no risk of malignancy or serious illness we should observe patient for 3 to 4 weeks and if after 3 to 4 weeks there is no improvement in patient or there is enlargement of lymph nodes then we have to go for biopsy or 
some other investigations again summary of approach to lymphadenopathy and if patient has significant physical signs or symptoms that is weight loss hepatosplenomegaly then we have to investigate but if with lymphadenopathy patient does not have significant physical signs or symptom then we should observe patient for 3 to 4 weeks and if lymph nodes resolve then we have to call patient on follow up but if lymph nodes increase in size or disease is not resolving then we have to investigate the patient now i am highlighting only important points in history first are there localizing symptoms or signs to suggest infection or neoplasm in specific site second are there constitutional symptoms such as fever weight loss fatigue or night sweats to suggest disorders such as tuberculosis lymphoma collagen vascular diseases unrecognized infection or malignancy third are there epidemiological clues such as occupational exposure recent travel or high risk behaviors that suggest specific disorders fourth is the patient taking a medication that may cause lymphadenopathy fifth nodes lasting less than 2 weeks or greater than 1 year with no progression of size have a low likelihood of being neoplastic but we have to exclude low grade lymphoma history of joint pains swellings myalgias skin rash may suggest rheumatological or connective tissue disease as for past history of tuberculosis or anti tubercle therapy history of easy bruising petechial hemorrhage gum bleed epistaxis suggesting of thrombocytopenia that may occur in acute leukemias history of onset of generalized weakness paleness of skin shortness of breath may suggest anemia that is common feature of acute leukemia and other hematological malignancies history of any discharge from nodes that is formation of a sinus and discharge from the node is very typical of tubercular lymph adenitis now i will discuss briefly about examination we have to look for size of lymph nodes tenderness consistency because stony heart nodes are typically sign of cancer usually metastatic firm rubbery nodes suggest lymphoma soft nodes are result of infections or inflammatory conditions then look for matting matting can be in benign disease for example tuberculosis or malignant disease for example metastatic carcinoma or lymphomas then location of lymph nodes supraclavicular lymphadenopathy has highest risk of malignancy estimated as 90% in patients older than 40 years of age and 25% in younger age group lymphadenopathy of right supraclavicular nodes is associated with cancer in mediastinum lungs or esophagus while left supraclavicular virtuous node receive lymphatic flow from thorax and abdomen and may signal pathology in testes ovaries kidneys pancreas prostate stomach or gall bladder usual causes of localized lymphadenopathy are local infection in draining area metastasis from cancers lymphomas that is hodgkins disease generalized lymphadenopathy can be due to infections or malignant diseases infection causing generalized lymphadenopathy may be viral illnesses for example epstein var uh, epstein bar virus infection cytomegalovirus infection hiv bacterial infection may be tuberculosis parasitic infections fungal infections and chlamydial infections then hematological malignancy for example hodgkins disease 
नॉन हॉजकिनस लिम्फोमा एक्यूट एंड क्रॉनिक ल्यूकीमियाज दैन मेटास्टेटिक कंडीशनस दैन इनफिल्ट्रेटिव कंडीशनस फॉर एग्जाम्पल सार्कोडोसिस एंड अदर रेयर काजेज सच एज ड्रग्स फेनेटॉइन एंड कावासाकिस डिजीज आई नीड योर अटेंशन टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन दिस लाइट बिकॉज दिस लाइट विल टेल अस हाउ वी कैन डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन बिनाइन एंड मिलिग्नेट लिफ नोड्स देर आर सर्टन फीचर्स विच कैन पॉइंट आउट टूवर्ड्स द बिनाइन और मिलिग्नेट कंडीशन ऑफ लिफ नोड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ अ लिफ नोड इज मलिग्नेट दैन इट्स साइज यूजली विल बी मोर दैन टू सेंटीमीटर कॉन्सिस्टेंसी हार्ड फर्म और रबरी ड्यूरेशन विल बी मोर दैन टू वीक्स एंड इट विल बी यूजली फिक्सड एंड अटैच टू अंडरलाइंग एंड सराउंडिंग स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड इट्स लोकेशन कैन बी सुपराक्लेविकुलर एपिट्रॉकुलर और जनरलाइज एंड यूजली मलिग्नेट लिम्फ नोड्स आर नॉट टेंडर बिनाइन लिम्फ नोड्स विल बी लेस दैन टू सेंटीमीटर एंड यूजली लेस दैन वन सेंटीमीटर दे आर सॉफ्ट दे आर ऑफ लेस ड्यूरेशन मोबाइल नॉट अटैच टू सराउंडिंग एंड अंडरलाइंग स्ट्रक्चर्स यूजली एट इनग्वाइनल एंड सब मैंडिबुलर रीजन एंड इन्फेक्शियस और बिनाइन लिम्फ नोड्स आर यूजली टेंडर नो हाउ टू इन्वेस्टिगेट वी शुड हैव कम्प्लीट ब्लड काउंट ऑफ पेशेंट विद पेरीफ्रल ब्लड स्मीयर एग्जामिनेशन ई एस आर सी रिएक्टिव प्रोटीन एल डी एच लेवल सीरम यूरिक एसिड लिवर फंक्शन टेस्ट प्योरीफाइड प्रोटीन डेरीवेटिव स्किन टेस्ट अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी एंड कंट्रास्ट इन्हांसिटी ऑफ एबडोमन टू डिलीनिएट हैपेटोमगैली सप्लिनोमगैली एनी हैपैटिक सप्लिनिक डिपॉजिट्स एंड इंट्रा एबडोमिनल लिम्फ नोट्स पेशेंट्स विद सर्वाइकल लिम्फोडिनोपैथी शुड हैव सी टी स्कैन हेड एंड नेक टू रूल आउट हेड एंड नेक कैंसर दैन बून मैरो एस्पायरेशन और बायोप्सी फॉर हेमाटोलॉजिकल मेलेग्नेंसीज दैन एलाइजा फॉर एच आई वी एंड फाइन नीडल एस्पायरेशन साइटालोजी एंड और लिम्फ नोड बायोप्सी इंडिकेशंस फॉर बायोप्सी इंक्रीज इन साइज ओवर बेस लाइन इन टू वीक्स नो डिक्रीज इन साइज इन फोर टू सिक्स वीक्स नो रेग्रेशन टू नॉर्मल इन एट टू ट्वेल्व वीक्स डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ न्यू साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स परसिस्टेंट अनएक्सप्लेन फीवर वेट लॉस नाइट स्वेट्स हार्ड नोट्स फिक्सेशन ऑफ नोट्स टू सराउंडिंग स्ट्रक्चर्स इनकनक्लूसिव फाइनेडल एस्पायरेशन साइटोलॉजी वंस बायोप्सी हैज़ बिन चूजन आइडली द लार्जेस्ट मोस्ट सस्पिशियस एंड मोस्ट असेसिबल नोट इज सेलेक्टेड taking into account differential diag- diagnostic yields by site excisional biopsy remains the diagnostic procedure of choice briefly about management we should identify cause and treat according to cause generalized lymphadenopathy usually has identifiable cause and for localized lymphadenopathy Three to four week observation period for resolution, if not high clinical suspicion for malignancy, and we should have excisional biopsy if there is risk for malignancy. Antibiotics are given only if there is strong evidence of bacterial infection. Now about neck lymph nodes. There are approximately 75 lymph nodes on each side of neck most lie within the deep jugular and spinal accessory chains the jugular chain is divided into superior middle and inferior groups cervical lymph node levels are level 1 it contains some mantle and sub mandibular nodes level 2 it is upper third of jugular nodes medial to sternocleidomastoid muscles and it inferior boundary is the plane of hyoid bone or bifurcation of carotid artery level 
it describes middle jugular nodes and is bounded inferiorly by plane of cricoid cartilage clinically or omohyoid surgically level 4 it defines superiorly by omohyoid muscle and inferiorly by clavicle level 5 contains posterior cervical triangle nodes level 6 it contains paratracheal and pretracheal nodes a rule of 7 provides a probable diagnosis of neck mass based on average duration of patient symptoms 7 days inflammation 7 month neoplasm 7 years congenital defect tuberculous lymphadenitis causative organism is mycobacterium tuberculosis remember that it is not mycobacterium bovis sites of tuberculous lymphadenitis are commonly neck lymph nodes common in upper deep cervical jugulodigastric lymph nodes next common is posterior triangle lymph nodes disease can also occur in other lymph nodes like axillary lymph nodes paraaortic lymph nodes mesenteric lymph nodes inguinal lymph nodes disease may be associated with hiv infections or lymphomas then mode of infection usually through tonsils and occasionally through blood from lungs tonsillar infection shows multiple tubercles on its surface from here infection spreads into jugulodigastric lymph nodes and then to other lymph nodes matting is due to periadenitis involving subcapsular sinus space of lymph nodes in children infection to neck node can come from either tonsils or adenoids or both gross pathology of tuberculous lymph node usually it is firm matted and with cut section showing yellowish caseating material on microscopic features epithelioid cells with caseating material are seen along with langhans type of giant cells different stages of tuberculosis of cervical lymph nodes stage 1 lymphadenitis in this stage lymph nodes are discrete non tender firm to hard and mobile stage 2 matting stage firm non tender move together n mass due to periadenitis stage 3 cold abscess formation and it is usually deep to deep fascia in stage 4 collar stud abscess forms and it ruptures through deep fascia under skin cross fluctuant and adherent to skin and fifth stage is stage of sinus formation clinical features are usually low grade fever malaise loss of weight along with swelling in neck which is firm matted cold abscess when form will be soft smooth non tender fluctuant without involvement of skin and it will not be warm once collar stud abscess burst open a discharging sinus will be formed and there may be multiple discharging sinuses associated pulmonary tuberculosis should also be looked for cervical spine should be examined for tuberculosis axillary lymph nodes when involved are due to retrograde lymphatic spread from neck nodes or blood spread inguinal lymph nodes are involved occasionally through blood sinus may persist due to fibrosis calcification secondary infection or inadequate reach of drug to maintain optimum concentration in caseation 
on investigation there will be raised esr and c reactive protein along with positive one to test sputum for culture and sensitivity should also be sanded specific investigations include aspiration of pus in cold abscess for culture and sensitivity and if there is a enlarged lymph node in early stages of peritonitis then excision biopsy should be done treatment for cervical tuberculous lymphadenopathy includes anti tuberculous drugs aspiration if there is abscess formation from non dependent area incision and drainage from non dependent area and surgical excision if enlarged lymph node is found in early phases now what are occult primary sites which can cause secondaries in neck lymph nodes these sites may be fossa of rosenmuller lateral wall of pharynx posterior third of tongue thyroid gland para nasal sinuses bronchus and esophagus i hope you have enjoyed my lecture on lymph adenopathy please watch this video again and again and share it in different whatsapp and facebook groups stay blessed take care allah hafiz